Okay, let's kick this off. So I wanted to do a podcast kind of on the fly. So rather than overthinking it, overproducing it, which is ironic, by the way, because I run a video production company and a podcast studio, and I'm literally sat at my desk, and behind me in the other studio is a, <laughs> a professional podcast studio. But um, I don't know, there was something about just doing it you know, and just seeing if I can do the whole thing on my my mobile. So I have an iPhone 12 Pro, and this is the sound recording, so I've uncompressed the sound, and it's not too bad. And I found this, this little app called Anchor by Spotify. Um, 6.6 thousand people told me that it was uh, it was a good one. So uh, positive reviews there. So I'm, I piled in. Um, skipped all the uh, all the intros and just literally dived in and pressed record. And I want this podcast to be a podcast, obviously, but also a some sort of like document, some sort of record of my thoughts. So like I have these these thoughts every day, um, which I think personally, um, from my perspective, are quite complex, quite deep involved, perhaps insightful for other people to hear, um, certainly a massive invitation for other people to contribute and disagree with me, feel free to disagree with me, or take me down a different direction, or, you know, come along with me on my thought processes. All of that is really good and very welcome, so big permission slip there. Um, and just see when a thought pops up, how quickly I can actually record it, document it, and see if that is formatable as a podcast. So let's see. Let's see. So the first thing I wanted to do was um, I, earlier, while I was picking some stuff off my my lovely wife on Facebook Marketplace, um, happened to scroll through um, my feed, as most people do. Um, And I have recently seen the Social Dilemma documentary um and i've been watching more netflix recently and i kind of want to i want to talk about expectations a little bit because i find myself doing this although i'm quite aware of it happening i'm still doing it and i bet other people are as well so what happens is i will go through a feed on my social media whether that's linkedin from a business perspective although i am finding LinkedIn is becoming really lent towards emotional stories or spiritual stories or, you know, it's, 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 it's not just business, you know, and, and I know that's a good thing, but also, I don't know, maybe a little bit gushy, maybe a little bit, maybe it's gone a little bit too far, I don't know, I don't know, maybe, and um, obviously Facebook is Facebook, you know, the original scrolling through there, people I know, people I am aware of, people I don't even know why I'm friends with. And then there's Instagram. Um, been using that a lot for a new project that I'm working on at the moment. So kind of delving into food, takeaways specifically. And do you know what? It's really difficult because like, we, like I wouldn't just take a photo of something that happened in my normal life under normal circumstances and put it on social media. Um, Because one, uh, being completely honest, completely transparent, I think I would probably think other people would find it boring. Um, Or I would be aware that it's not representing my life in the way that I would want other people to perceive my life to be. So I am part of the problem, and here is the problem. Um, Because that is my life. Because my life um, is both incredible and incredibly ordinary at the same time. Like everyone else's, like literally everyone else's on the planet. So there isn't a person on the planet that is living a life like a movie on Netflix or a series or a Instagram post or a Facebook post or a LinkedIn LinkedIn feed. That's just not happening. It's not happening. So what, what I do, and I'm sure you guys do this as well, is I will take a moment in my life, which I think stands out anyway, and I will go overboard, and I will 
try and take the perfect image and I will color grade it and I will remove anything that doesn't completely and utterly underpin the moment that I want other people to believe I had. And, and you know, I will never manufacture a moment, you know, the moment is there in the first place, but it is an extraordinary representation of a moment in my life. And we're talking about, you know, a, a moment that perhaps doesn't come along every day, but a moment that comes along maybe once a week. And then I will put that on social media. And then what I will do is I'll pass that off as my life. As, oh, just another average moment in my life. And then, this is the irony, I will then go on to a social media feed and I will scroll through. And then all of a sudden I'm like, oh my God, everyone else is having the most incredible lives. But the problem is they're doing the same thing. So what we're doing is we're, we're, we're all selling a false sense of self to everyone you know the people that we know well our loved ones um although they could probably see through it to a certain extent you know our acquaintances our wider network of friends and the people that we don't know um and then we kind of it's like a an addiction isn't it because then you get the likes and then you get the comments and then you're like oh my god you know, I need to find other moments. And then perhaps you maybe you stretch more to manufacture these moments or you deliberately put yourself in a situation that might... And this is mad, right? <laughs> you literally start curating your own life to be able to post those moments on social media for some sort of acknowledgement that it's worthy of being documented, which is crazy, right? Because it's no longer your moment. And it was no longer just a moment that happened. It was a moment that you manufactured. And that's a really slippery slope because you stop living your life and embracing the mundane, embracing the unexpected. And you start trying to control every aspect of it. And I'm sure that's not healthy. And, you know, I, I watched A Social Dilemma on Netflix and I'm sure that's exactly what they were what they were getting at there. And, and then we go and look at everyone else's and we, and we just never live up to it. You know, even if we had that incredible moment that we captured perfectly and we put it on social media, you know, you are surrounded by everyone, everyone else's perfect moments. And then you just pick up this really false perception that, oh, my days, everyone is living a better life than me. Everyone is doing the most incredible things. But the thing is, those things, like, didn't actually happen, or at least they didn't happen in the way that you're perceiving them to have happened, because it's, it's one frame. You know, when I record video, I won't... Um, I won't record less than 24 frames a second in order to show a moving image. And we're talking about one 24th of a second, at least, of a moment. And maybe that moment didn't even last any longer than that. But what we do is we we look at that and we think, oh, wow, that, I bet the whole day was just incredible. You know, I bet the lighting was just perfect and the food lasted all day and then I bet they were sat and they were imagining and making stuff up and then they were sat by the sunrise um at the sunset you know started the day with the sunrise and they you know they were all out there with their, their friends and their family by a campfire with this perfect light and the temperature was amazing and oh my god you start to sort of to create this 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 like narrative this picture this story of an event that you're completely basing one one twenty-fourth of a second at least on that was probably manufactured in the first place that had a vague representation of the moment that actually happened in their real life and then we get sad and then we get depressed and then we think oh I need to try harder but then we don't try harder in our real lives we try harder to try, try and recreate those moments which just make other people feel just as shit I don't know it just feels a little bit like we might have lost our way so that's my thought for today. And Netflix, you know, Netflix is, is great. I'm trying to watch more documentaries, although obviously that is just a representation of life. Um, I'm trying to watch less fiction, although ironically my job is to create fiction to a certain extent. Um, and I do enjoy it and I love characters and narratives and story arcs and beautiful cinematography and lighting and, you know, punchy sound. I love all those things. But at the end of the day, you know, that isn't a real life. And that isn't a real life that I should be aspiring to or anyone else should be aspiring to. 
it's kind of like having something sweet after breakfast. You know, it's a, it's a small treat that should be had occasionally that you should absolutely should not spill into the rest of your life because otherwise you become obese and you have health problems and it moves from being a treat, a snack to something that's, you know, a dependency. So, uh, yeah, I think everything in moderation, definitely take everything you see on social media or Netflix or any type of media, YouTube, with a pinch of salt. It's no one's real life. It's just a representation of a single moment or a series of moments that have been curated specifically to make you fall in love with it. So you'll become a subscriber or a follower or you'll press the like button or you'll comment or you'll share. So, yeah, just... And I'm saying this as much for my own benefit than than your benefit. If we could just put that into context and... And I feel better having got this off my chest. So I feel like, wow, a little bit of a weight has lifted. So hopefully this helps you guys too. Um, right, until the next thought, I will see you soon.